finally time. It's on home soil. It kicks off here at Old Trafford. We'll all be watching. This is our Euros. Yes, a big welcome to our Euros by the PFA. And today, for our first episode, we've got an unbelievably strong lineup. We've got esteemed broadcaster Flo Lloyd Hughes, ex England defender, now making waves at the PFA, is Fern Whelan. And both sides are Liverpool covered with Taylor Hines and Megan Finnegan, who are flying the flag for the Long Islanders. In a few days' time here at Old Trafford, the Euros are going to be kicking off. How are we feeling? Yeah, really excited. It's going to be sold out. Really big crowd, over 70,000. You can definitely tell that as a city and as a country, people are getting really excited for the tournament. Uh, yeah, I'm coming to the first game against Austria with a big big clan of us. I think there's like 10, 11 of oh, us, great. all my family. But I think what's great to see is I've, my older nephews as well, they've grown up with me playing football. So that to them, it's not men's football, it's women's football, it's just football. So they're all really buzzing and I'm buzzing to come and watch as well. So, you know, it should be really exciting. And you as a young player, looking at these games, just looking at the senior Lionesses being involved at stadiums like this, selling out, must be a great feeling. Yeah, definitely. It's like where you want to be and obviously the women's game is growing really well now. And to be able to have a competition like this at your home country and at big stadiums like this, I think it's amazing. For in these moments, what will the players be thinking as they're walking out of that tunnel? I think they'll be buzzing, like, you know, you're walking out in front of 70,000 plus fans, like, it's amazing. They just want to get on the pitch and they just want to prove what they can do in front of family, in front of friends, the home, that home advantage. You've got to hope that that spares them on even more. And Megan, being in the WSL this season, how have you found it? Because the buzz around the league, now going into a big Euros, a big summer of football, must be great to be part of that. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. And I think it's even more exciting now going into the next season. You know, what this could do for for our league is really exciting. And I I hope that England obviously win it. I hope they do as well as possible because I think the, the better that we do, the more interest that the league's going to get. And I think, you know, for us playing in it, that just makes it 10 times better for us. That's a great point, Flo. How much do you think this Euros can have an impact on women's football in this country? You hear this a lot, a lot of the time when there's a major tournament. I think in 2012, the Olympic Games, when Team GB, I think that was meant to be a pivotal moment for the sport. And it was massive, but perhaps it wasn't enough. And then you had it again in 2015 when England obviously did really well, got third in the World Cup. And then you had it again in 2017, getting to semi-finals of the Euros. 2019, getting to semi-finals of the World Cup. And every single time it feels like this is the moment. So I think you can easily kind of fall into that trap of thinking that like this is going to be a game-changing tournament. But the fact that this is in England will no doubt spark a lot of interest. We know England women are very popular in this country. They get millions of people watching their games. They sell out a lot of stadiums. They've sold out Wembley. But it's about the WSL really growing and building on those crowds, which I think is the next challenge for women's football. And Fern, your work at the PFA, you've got a new project coming up that is all about inspiring different groups of people. Do you think this Euros could be a catalyst for making football accessible for, for everyone? I would absolutely love that and I'm really excited to see where the whole the See Achieve It scheme that we've developed at the PFA can go um, and inspiring that next generation of young players who are coming through and I think you know you look at the, the team at the moment it's maybe not as, as diverse as we'd like and I think that's where we're aiming to go for the next obviously five ten years is trying to get that England team trying to get the WSL as diverse as possible and that's hopefully what um, what the City Achieve It scheme will do going forward. The, the list of players who are going to be playing at this Euros stacks. Huge, huge players. Megan, you've been playing against some of them week in, week out. <laughs> who are you most looking forward to seeing? From a biased point of view, I'm really excited to see Lauren Hemp. Very lucky to play with her in the Under 20s World Cup, and I think she just goes from strength to strength. And I think for England, she could be that player that that when they need something special, I think she's the one that can provide it. I think she'd be my worst nightmare to play up against as a defender. So I'm really looking forward to see her thrive. And this England team, it's got such a blend of experienced players who have done it at tournaments and really exciting young players. How much do you think she's developed from that Under-20 World Cup? She's had a lot of hype around her now for, for quite a number of years since she was at Bristol, really. Um, but I think the good thing about her is that she doesn't let the noise phase her. She just wants to get at people all the time. I don't want to add to the noise that Megan mentioned, but I personally think that 
in not too long a while, Lauren Hemp's going to be one of the best players in the world. Obviously, in England, we know so much about her, but I don't think she's really respected internationally that much. But I think this tournament for the rest of the world and the rest of Europe, I think they're going to be terrified of her because she is unbelievable. Well, she's just got no fear, so actually. No. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she's going to come up against some of the best defenders in Europe. and. You can tell she's just not actually going to be phased by it. She's still going to do what she does. She's still going to drive at them, dribble around them, and absolute no fear. She's, she's frightening to play against and amazing to watch. And to win a record-breaking four PFA Young Player of the Year, and she was very close. It's unfair, isn't it? I'm, I don't know when she's going to graduate from that. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. every year I'm like, surely not again, and then she does it again. It's unbelievable. I know the Lionesses are exciting, but looking further afield, Taylor, is there anyone who you can't wait to see them here? I know Rachel Furness, who's a great player for Northern Ireland and I'm excited to see how England deal with her. Who else should people be looking out for in the Euros this summer? I think a lot of people will probably know the likes of Viv Miedemar already. There's lots of players in that Holland team. Jill Rod, who's at Wolfsburg now, had a really good season, especially in the Champions League. Danielle van der Donk, who used to play at Arsenal, now at Lyon. Uh, so there's so much talent coming in. But I think a name that a lot of people want to go and see is Alexi Bateas. Ballon d'Or winner, obviously, at Barcelona. They were, you know, so mesmerised by her talent, the way her brain works, the way she just reads the game so well. She's such a good player, so I think that's going to bring a lot of fans into some of these stadiums this summer. I want to see France play, I want to see Wendy Renard play. Big commanding tower and centre-half, I've played against her before and since then, you know, watched her throughout her career and she can score goals as well as commander defence and she's just a brilliant player and a lot of players that, you know, someone that a lot of young girls can learn from, I think, in my eyes. So she'll be really yeah. exciting to watch. Centre-half union. That's the centre-half union. Yeah. I, I could <laughs> not mention it. I could not mention it. No, she's absolutely brilliant. And every time I watch her play, watch France play, you know, she's the player I'm looking to. And a lot of players can learn a lot from her. It's an exciting summer ahead. Yeah. Leah Williamson, skipper. Yeah. Has it settled in yet? Do you know what? I don't know. I don't think it ever will really, but I'm just enjoying the ride at the minute. Even walking into the change room and, you know, the armbands on your seat, it's just a little, it's a reminder of your responsibility, which is a good thing, but also I just, I just know how it's going to make my mum and my dad, you know, my family, so that's important to me. And that's the thing, that achievement is as big for you as it is your family. They were the ones driving you all over the country that's when you were young. Yeah. When you called them to tell them, what, were, what was their reaction? They're but like buzzing and you know crying and my grandparents cried and I just think to me you know in football it's it's just a it's a role that somebody takes on like it's not necessarily a, like it is an achievement but it's not something that you ever seek whereas for them to then be able to celebrate that is so nice because I can never repay them for everything they've done for me you know like the driving the, you know buying boots buying, buying shin pads, yeah the yeah, amount yeah. of money. I won't be able to repay that, but I can just give them ex an experience with me and a journey with me, and this is obviously now just taking it to a new level. When I say home Euros 2022, what emotion comes to mind? Excited. That's the main one. No nerves. 100%. Not first. Not the main. Not main. So yeah. excitement. Yeah. And then what are we going next? I think. I think like apprehension, you know, like I want to, I want to see what it's going to yeah. be. Uh, I'm intrigued to see what it's going to be like. Um, nerves, yeah. obviously, like good, yeah, good yeah. nerves, you know, ready. Uh, am I going two more? No, that's perfect. You can have those. I'll give you a go. Just, just, just two. We don't want to make it too complicated. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Leah, appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you very much. Bring it home. Thank you. Big thanks to our new skipper, Leah Williamson. Now look firm. I know it's defensive union, Leah Williamson, what an appointment as captain. She's a calm, cool head and I think the players need that. Um, she's still only young, you know, a big tournament for her to go into as captain as well. But I think, you know, you hear her talk and she's just taking each game as it comes, taking it in her stride. She's enjoying it and I think, and what's good to see is she's learning as well as it goes through. So I say centre-half union, but she's actually been playing in midfield, which is good to see. You know, she's covering her back line, but she's actually joining in and starting attacks as well, which has been really positive. She's learning through her role and I think she's thriving and enjoying it. And Megan, when you look at her and as someone you could aspire to have a career like a similar position, how good is she? She's amazing. I think her biggest strength is how composed she's on the ball, which is why she's able to play in midfield and she does it so effortlessly. You know, you, you wouldn't look at her playing in midfield and and think that she played it for Arsenal every weekend at centre back. You know, in, in my personal opinion, she's always kind of been destined to be you know, future England captain. Now, Flo, we were both at the media day. I saw you next to the flapjacks. I thought, wherever Flo be, I know there'll be coffee and there'll be flapjacks. <laughs> but how was the mood around the camp, do you think? 
yeah, it was interesting. And, and those, I mean, those media days are always quite chaotic. I feel bad for the players, to be honest, because it was a long old day. They deal, dealt with it really well. And, you know, they were all talking about how excited they are for some of them. It's first major tournament, you know, someone like Ella Toon, whereas some people, this is their kind of third or fourth tournament. And I think Jill Scott's going into her 10th one. So uh, some of it's at very different levels for, for the different players, but they're all really excited, very focused, know what they want to do. And they all love working with Serena Vigman. They've been busy, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. And I think when they get round to the tournament actually coming, they'll be like, right, we can actually just focus on the football now. It's quite nice that we can Hopefully they're not going to be doing too much, yes, media after games and things like that, but all the kind of external commercial stuff can kind of take a back seat and they can just focus on the football now. You yeah. can just tell that they just want to be on the pit, yeah. <laughs> pitch already and I guess that's what's ex like making them even more excited, really. Well, it's exciting. We've got two home nations to support this summer and the other home nation team to qualify, Northern Ireland. Taylor, how good is it going to be to see them in a major tournament? I mean, they've done very well, very, very well. and. I think it's an exciting game between England and Northern Ireland, a derby, <laughs> and I think, I think it's only the way forward for them and on the way up. And it's good to see, obviously, England now, they're all fully-fledged professionals, have been for many years, some of them, but Northern Ireland, they've got players who have other jobs. How much impact do you think that will have on their preparations for the tournament? I think the, the Irish FA have done really well to set them up ahead of the tournament, given them I think three or four months of full-time camp for the ones that obviously don't play professional football, which I think is really important. And also for a lot of those players this summer, this is a way to put yourself in the shop window. I mean, you're going to have a lot of people watching and there will be other teams as well in this tournament who don't have fully professional squads. So they're not the only ones, but obviously for a majority of that squad, this is huge. And they've kind of got no pressure against them as well, have they? They can go in as underdogs, they can kind of just go in, enjoy the experience, experience enjoy the tournament you know obviously go out on the pitch and show what it is they can do and hopefully nick some points within the group stages but you know for them there's no expectation they can go out and just enjoy their football in front of a lot of fans and northern ireland kick off a difficult game against norway my norwegian friends reckon they've got a right chance this summer and they could be a big factor in the tournament how well can northern ireland do against a strong norwegian team i think if you'd ask me that Three months ago, before Ada Hegerberg said she was coming back to Norway, I would have been giving them a, a, a better chance. But Hegerberg has good game talk. So I think she is on the charge, and I think Norway want to light up this tournament and get off to a good start. So I think if you're Northern Ireland and you're, you're seeing how sort of keen and, and motivated that Norwegian side are, I think you'd be a little bit scared. So that's a, that's a tough way to start the competition. Right, it's crunch time. I've got to get some predictions. I've got this amazing magic eight ball. I'll get one answer from each of you. Who is going to win the golden boot? I reckon Vivian Medina. Can't. It's hard to look past her, really. When you just see her, it's just goals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I th that's a good shout. Ellen White hasn't had the best domestic season, but when she gets to major tournaments, she becomes a different animal. She does. She has this thing where her eyes just go so wide, and she's just like a woman possessed. She did it in Tokyo. She was tied for the golden boot in France. She is England's record goal scorer. So I think regardless of domestic form, I'm just going to go with Ellen Proven White. Proven goal scorer. Proven I mean. goal scorer. And I know, you know, things. she's got a little bit older. She's not quite the same player as she was, but even just a summer ago, she tore it up in Tokyo. So I think it's going to be her. I'm going to go for Ellen White. I agree. Those? I agree. No, to be fair, I add back Ellen. I'm playing with her. I know she, she loves a big stage. She loves a crowd. She always seems to put on a show and big performances, as you say, so many goals in previous tournaments. So, you know, I, I'm back in Ellen White as well. No pressure. You've got a bit of a deciding <laughs> zone. You can either go with Miedema or Ellen White. I back England to go all the way. So I think, you know, the more games she's got, the, the more chance. So we'll say Ellen. We're going to go Ellen White. OK, let's another do Another golden boot. All right, well, from a golden boot to let, a golden let, ball. The fate decides. <laughs> oh, Ellen White. So it shall be. Oh, okay. so destiny. The ball okay. agrees with us. So next up, look, every tournament has one. We've got to pick a dark horse. Sweden are a very, very strong team. I think obviously they did really well in the last Olympics, um, just losing out. And I think they've got a very strong squad and I think, yeah, they shouldn't be uh, overlooked. I'm not hearing so much talk about France. So for me, I think they'd like be a my. High key, low it's key as a high yeah. key underdog. It's weird that no one's really mentioning them. So I'm I'm looking at France and seeing what they can do, and I think they might kind of cruise through quietly, and then we might we might find them in the final. Flo, anyone else for you? 
Well, I mentioned Norway earlier, and a bit like France, I don't think they're a clear underdog because they've got so much pedigree that they've got good players. But I just think having Ada Hegerberg just elevates them to another level, and I think people aren't really talking about them as much as England, Sweden, France, Holland, Germany. And that game against Norway for England could be a pivotal one in whether or not they win that group and whether they potentially might face Spain in the quarterfinals. So I think Norway, for me, are the fake underdogs. <laughs> They're not real underdogs. I don't get a vote. I'm just here <laughs> with the magic ball. But Norway would be mine too. Taylor, anyone God, else? I've got a but choice. We've got, we've got yeah. a I know, got a choice choices. Do you know what? I definitely agree with Flo. I think Norway. I think they're going to be a tough team to play against and I think they are getting underestimated a little bit. Well, that just nudges it, so we'll send it to a magical vote. <laughs> Norway. Oh, disagrees, so it might be one of yours. We've got chances aren't good of Norway to be our underdog, so it doesn't agree with us. That's one all to the magic ball, so we'll have to see who comes out on top. I feel like this could be a good thing, actually. I might just ask this question like, for my daily life. Yeah, take it with you. Now we've got to get on to the big one. Who is going to be lifting that trophy? You've got to back the girls, haven't you? Back England all the way. Yeah. I'm a romantic, I'm a believer. <laughs> you have to go with England. We've got, are we all going England? We I'm, to, I'm going we? England, I'm yeah. Going England. I mean, the reasons speak for themselves, don't they? It's home. Obviously, we're all seeing our friends play. We our families coming to watch. There's young girls aspiring to be like them. Can they win on the big stage? Um, so for me, yeah, it, it's England. It's all day. I want to see England winning at Wembley. I think just previous tournaments gone by, they've just just not quite been there and I just think now under Serena, you know, I think the girls really enjoy working under as, as Flo said and and the fact that it's at home, this just seems like the extra push that they need to, to go the whole way. I don't actually care what this says to be honest. No! <laughs> no! Oh. Throw it away. <laughs> Launch it into the pitch, I can't read that. Shake it again. <laughs> it says the stars say no. I don't like it. It's not written in the stars, is it? Shake it again. Shake it again, Shake Liam. Can't have that. It's Norwegian. No. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> this, is I'm actually, sorry. This, is, this is really. I was like, oh, what? Right, second go. Okay. Positively. Yeah. yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that's just better. Cut the other stuff out. Yeah, cut the other stick, stuff stick out. Positively. Can't wait to see the home nations, both England and Northern Ireland, in a home tournament. Make sure you're following at the PFA for more posts, more updates, and some more Euros content. Thank you.